You're listening to the Vic 757 Podcast featuring Dwight and Michael Vic talking all things tech. What's going on, everyone? Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to another edition of the Vic 757 Show talking all things tech. I'm your host, former Big East all-conference lineman, Dwight Vick, along with my cousin, here for a family affair, rivalry week, the legend, the icon, all-conference, Michael Vick. What's going on? Happy holidays to you, cuz. You yeah, and yeah, the family. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah. y'all over there. Yeah, we love you too, man. You know how that go. We definitely love you, yeah. man. Most definitely. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely. It's, hey, hey, hey it's, it's the time to be thankful. Yes. For real. Yes. Thank you yes. for a lot, man. Got family in town. You know, the house is crazy. My son is playing with his cousins and they running around and they, you know, it's, it's, it's a good time, man. It's a good Wish time. You could be there, man. You know, up here in VA, Northern Virginia, it's freezing. Uh, it's I freezing. know. I can tell the way you dressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, you know, and, um, you know, I would have the coat on, but it wouldn't look professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, hey, the, the hoodie hugging tight and, and shout out to Victory Life, man. Victory Life represents a lot to all the people man, and what you've been able to do with that platform. It's been amazing, cuz. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. And um, look, look, real quick, man. You know, our show is sponsored. Guys, shout out our sponsors, man. We're feeling thankful for them, man. I want to shout out soulhoodie.com, man. Check them out at soulhoodie.com for apparel. Also, make sure you get uh different things as far as for your workout gear. We got high school pro, they got a gallery, they can do custom designs. So check them out. They're one of our proud sponsors as well as Alexandra Restaurant Partners. Make sure you check them out online for catering showcases they got a variety of restaurants as well as events that you can uh, create for birthday parties anniversaries custom catering they have a, restaurants in orlando florida as well as northern virginia restaurants such as high tide lounge Colette 22 the majestic me as italian kitchen and also my favorite man touchdown wings and bar and tutu <laughs> hold on make sure i say it right man um uh, where they at? Oh, Cafe Two Two Tango in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> That's the one we heading for. That's what we 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 headed to Cafe Two Two Tango. Yeah, on me. Yeah. <laughs> and also, man, you shout out our Victory Life, man. You know you involved me so much because it's a reminder for everybody. Hopefully, uh, everybody saw last week's episode with those legends. I mean, we had a lot of views, but we we'll remind everybody, especially as young guys watching athletes, to check out the Michael Dual Michael Vick Dual Threat System. It's uh, available at, uh, tell them the website, cuz. Or you can go to www.proclass.com backslash Vic. Check out all the latest exclusive, the dual threat system, how we teaching it, how we teaching quarterback, and how we teach you how to build speed. It's been so much fun, and I look forward to continue to, to uh, you know, stretch that platform out and uh, just give the kids, the next generation, the opportunity to get better, cuz. And at some point, I get you up there so you can cater to the offensive lineman. Because that's needed. Without the offensive line, there is no yeah, running. There no is doubt. no quarterbacking. There no. is no receiver uh, going for a thousand yards receiving. It's none of that. No doubt. Nah, you're absolutely right, man. And I'm 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 honored. You know, I would definitely make that happen, man. Also, Thank make you. sure you guys register because, like I said last week, this is not only just a physical experience, but it's also a mental. If you're going to be an athlete at the highest level. You know, you're going to play quarterback or, as you mentioned, offensive lineman or even, you know, in the secondary, wherever you want to improve your skill set, your 40 times, your athletic, athletic performance, you got to make sure you're mentally there, too. And, you know, and that's yeah. what it comes down to. So make sure you check out, again, the Michael Vick dual threat system, man, available online and to get further information and set up, you know, some stuff, and you know, check it out, man. But yeah. We got another stacked show, man. We got Danny Noakes getting ready to jump on here in a second, man, to break down a tough, tough loss, man. Virginia Tech battle. Um, they came down to Miami South Beach, <laughs> and they looked like they were spending too much time on the beach. The Hurricanes jumped on them 21-3, to but they came back, and at one time the game was 31-26. to Virginia Tech kicked the onside kick, came down and scored. They alternated quarterbacks, and next thing you know, they won the ball game, man. It was 31-26, but – the offense just could not really muster anything after they came back and made a five-point game. And defense, unfortunately, gave a big plays all night. There was a controversial call 
when Tech had momentum and they stopped Miami, all even the announcers, everybody tweeting about the game. So that you know it was on fourth and one, they got stopped. Next thing you know, uh, you know Virginia Tech didn't get the call. Miami um, uh, got the ball, uh, kept the ball, and went on to score. Man, so it's a tough loss, I, I, man. I, I, I want to say this, man. I mean, it wasn't a bad showing by by JC. No, nah, no, it, at it all. really wasn't, man. To pull it all together in a week is is not an easy feat, and you know, to get the coaching staff aligned and get game plans together and get guys' mindsets off of what had just happened so abruptly and into the game, um, to be able to go out and still maintain that type of focus, it just shows leadership all across the board, I think. Yeah, no doubt, man. And um, I, I thought the same way. You know, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I've not been through that before on a collegiate level, but at the same time, I felt like it was one of those situations where, you know, given all the stuff that they experienced throughout the week, Miami had a lot of talent, but Virginia Tech was able to show a lot of heart, and they they win that game. Trey Turner had a great catch, and um, um, the ball. Hurricanes prevailed, man. And um, they're now bowl eligible, and Virginia Tech yeah. faces their rival this week down in Charlottesville for another road game to end the season. Hopefully it's not in the overall season. But to talk more about the Wahoos and Hokies, we got Danny Noakes joining us for his weekly segment, Noakes Noakes, man. Danny, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. How are you? Doing great, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Doing to great. You, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Nice, nice shirt, Danny. You, you must be in a Thanksgiving <laughs> mood. You look like you. That's right. You look like you about to go butterball the turkey or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, man. Hey, yeah, we got we got the whole family down here in the the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So actually, oh, nice. actually not too far from not too far from where you guys are are from. Okay. Yeah, 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 man. So. Daddy, um, I didn't get a chance to do our normal check-in, you know, the prep for the show and just talk Virginia Tech sports and sports in general. So, you know, Virginia Tech, as I was on the mic right before you jumped on, had a tough loss to their rival Miami. You know, Miami jumped on them, made some big plays. The defense probably played their worst, especially the second day, their worst game of the season other than Pittsburgh. And even in Pittsburgh, that game, they were fighting early. The offense didn't do their job, but Miami jumped on them. Their receivers made big plays. But next thing you know, Virginia Tech's in that game. 31-26, and it was that controversial call at fourth and one where Miami kept the ball and subsequently went down to score. But overall, Tech showed a lot of fight from our perspective. But, Danny, we, this is why we have you on, man. What are your notes? What do, what notes and insight do you have about that game and the Tech's overall performance? Yeah, I love the way that they hung around. I'm, I'm with both of you guys on that. I thought that the way that that game started was certainly not encouraging, and the, the limited – production that we saw on offense combined with the fact that it looked like we knew we were going to have to go to Connor Blumrick for the rest of the game did not look good. And, you know, I give that kid a lot of credit because as tough as we've seen guys like Michael Brewer, Ryan Willis, Braxton Burmeister, and and now Blumrick, I think might be one of the <laughs> next guys in line that, man, he just, he, he's, he, he just doesn't have the opportunities that, you would hope, and, and that comes from having a solid offensive line there. But, uh, you know, I, I, I was encouraged in a lot of ways from what I saw. I wasn't surprised uh, in, in some of the negative aspects of what we saw from that game, too. You know, the, the weather also played an incredibly large factor. Oh, yes. With the torrential yeah. downpour. And that's impossible to ignore. So it, there was a lot that were, was going against Virginia Tech. And, you know, I, I said that with J.C. Price taking over as the interim head coach, I felt like – they were in as good a position to win these last two games as if Fuente, as as if Fuente were to have stayed for the last two games. And I still believe that, by the way. I don't think that whether he was there or not, they he would have made a difference in, in winning yeah. against Miami on the road, especially. Um, but again, they fought to the end. There were a number of opportunities where you know Miami could have kind of snuffed them out and, and Virginia Tech hung around. And for that I give them credit. It sets up, uh, obviously, a, a do-or-die situation in terms of a bowl game for the Hokies. But, it, you know, you guys know all about UVA week. It's, it's about more than just a bowl game. It's about the Commonwealth Cup, bragging rights. It's about the state of Virginia, man. Hold on, Danny. Look, before Mike talk, before he hits you with a question, it's UVA week. Look what I got. Look what I got I for, our viewers. for our that's listeners. From the that's the helmet. Yeah, that's the helmet. For those listening on Spotify, I just pulled out the helmet. Got, I still got everything. I tell people all the time, I keep I keep it in the trunk just in case something got to pop off. <laughs> okay. And you got to throw your helmet on? 
Sometimes you might. Sometimes young and say you don't got it no more. Well, I, I, I yeah. guess it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> Dude, I love that. That that's a that's the that's the helmet you're rocking and all those pictures that we see too. Yeah, when, when man. They do the throwbacks. Yeah, that, that I is love still that. It. That is still hey, it, man. Hey, fellas, you you know what I appreciated more about this weekend than anything. Um, and I was Danny. I was just talking to Dwight about this and how mm -hmm. JC kind of handled himself. Like, go in a situation like that when so many things happen and there's so many moving parts, and you like. You're looking around, next thing you know, you find yourself walking the sidelines as the interim head coach. Like that, that's not an easy thing to do. So when we went down early, my my thing was, you know, I, I walked away from the TV, honestly. I was like, you know what? I don't even like seeing JC in that position. No, nah, this yo. is so unfair. You know, he walking the sidelines, and I'm like, you know, I wish I could do something. You know, I wish I had a couple more downs left in me because I come through and I, you know, the hurricane. You know, hurricanes would have felt the true hurricane. You know, <laughs> that's but, right. But that, that's unrealistic. But but hey, just in, in, in that in that realm, just to um, you know, I guess the way they battled, the way they fought, man, Danny. I was just telling the white. It's, it's a testament to this that this team do, does have some toughness to them. Like without a doubt, the ceiling is high for us moving forward. We just got to put it all together. No question, and and I, that's that was my biggest takeaway too from the game. Just the fact that they could have they they went down early and they could have they could have really just faded away and you know kind of lied down, but they didn't. And and I think that's a testament to J.C. Price. And by the way, Mike, I think I speak for all Hokies fans. We all wish that you had a few more downs left to give us, man. We <laughs> yes, sir. Suit you, out. you you and Dwight, man. Dwight and Dwight away. too. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need both you guys back out there, man. But yeah, I you know I. I J.C. Price, I just, there's been nothing but good things said about him, I think, in, even in the wake of this loss to, to Miami. And I think that says a lot about, you know, him, obviously, as, as a person and whatnot, but, but him as a coach, too. And usually it's we start that statement the other way around a little bit. But, you know, when we're talking about Virginia Tech looking for their next head coach, I obviously don't think J.C. Price is, is necessarily going to be that guy. Maybe he will. I don't think that'll be the case, but he could remain on the staff in some capacity i can't imagine that they're going to want to get rid of every single former tech player that's on that oh. staff because you know you got guys like jack tyler our boy pearson prelo is on that staff and, and you know justin hamilton ma many other guys that have been with the program know the state and that sort of thing so these these next few months are going to be very interesting as, as the coaching search ramps up and you know we get to the end of the season but there is one game left and this is the one we we've always got circled at, at the end of the year boys yeah, you know, I want to ask you about that, Danny. You know, UVA, um, you know, Saturday night, Saturday afternoon before the Hokies played, they had a still a chance to win the Coastal. If UVA had beaten Pittsburgh and UVA battled, um, if UVA had beaten Pittsburgh and I think if Tech had beaten Miami, then basically they would be in a situation um, in which Virginia Tech would have a chance this weekend against UVA to win the Coastal. Obviously, that didn't wow. happen. Yeah, it was still crazy. That's how – but Pittsburgh, I felt like the game when they beat Virginia Tech, they were going to win the Coastal because right. Virginia Tech still had the advantage in the win-loss column in the, in the Coastal. Pittsburgh beat them on the road, which everyone knows is still the toughest place to play in the ACC other than Clemson. And I saw Pittsburgh that day. I said, you know what, UVA is still alive, but I didn't feel like anybody else in that division had a chance. UVA, Danny, has Armstrong. Uh, arguably one of the best quarterbacks in UVA history. He just broke Matt Schwab's record from 2003 in yardage, past yardage. Shout out to Matt Schwab. That's my yeah. man. Yeah. My yeah. 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 That's so right. Armstrong has got to feel great. You know, he lost to Tech last year, 33 to 15. Um, neither team went to a bowl. UVA chose not to. Virginia Tech also chose not to. Um, but at the same time, UVA has a lot to prove. They still, when it comes down to it, have only beaten Tech one time since 2003 and twice if you count 1998. So what do you mm. see what do you see Virginia Tech need to do to slow down Armstrong and UVA? Yeah, I think it it obviously all starts with him, right? I mean, you talk about the the straw that stirs the drink. I mean, Armstrong has been that guy. Early on in the season, he was I guess only maybe in UVA circles, but it, there were some people that were talking about him being considered for a major award at the end of the year, be that ACC player of the year or, or you know, potentially something more. Obviously, with the injuries, that's not going to happen. And, and UVA hasn't quite had the season that 
they started out with, which was, which was pretty darn good. And, you know, I don't quite feel the same way about this matchup that I did maybe a couple of months ago. And that's for a, a multitude of different reasons. We've seen both of these teams kind of go up and down yeah. in that, in that, in that time period. It, it hasn't just been Virginia tech, you know, when Fuente was still here, there were multiple weeks where we were sitting here talking about how they've got an opportunity to take, uh, you know, the driver's seat in the coastal division. And then they did not but, the, you know, the, they haven't – Virginia Tech is struggling as they have been over the last couple of weeks. You know, they their their failures haven't been completely sustained. And, and you know, I think that has to do with their ability to run the ball over the, the last month or so being so much better than it has been the last year or so. So, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, you obviously have to stop Armstrong because he is – he just makes everybody go, you know, they, they don't quite have the explosiveness. They don't have a guy like an Alameda Zacchaeus who's, who's in Atlanta now in the NFL and, and really making an impact. They don't quite have that skill on offense, but Armstrong, like you said, I mean, I don't, I didn't think that we were going to see anybody quite like Bryce Perkins again for a long time at UVA, but here we go. Armstrong has has entered that conversation for sure. So defensively find a way to bottle him up. Don't let him, move too much around outside the pocket, you know, cause that's the sort of thing that kills Virginia tech and has for, for years. When Bud Foster was here, Justin Hamlin, it doesn't matter. Those mobile quarterbacks really have, have been a thorn in our side. So slow him down. And then on the offensive side of the ball, run the, run it, man. Just, just give it to, to Malachi Thomas, Raheem Blackshaw. You've got the guys, the offensive line has to come out with an attitude. They have to come out ready to play because, when it comes down to it, they're going to have to execute. You know, we could talk about these X's and O's and whatnot, but the reality is two teams are very evenly matched. You know, again, for all the struggles that the Hokies have gone through this year, they're in a, a, a position here to at least have salvaged some positive spin of the season. And it's not as much the bowl game as it, as it would be getting a, another win over your in-state rival in UVA. And then – begins what will just be a whirlwind of an off season. And I, I think, you know, we, we want to be able to savor at least one more win on, a, on Saturday afternoon at three 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Dan, if you're saying we have trouble stopping mobile quarterbacks and them breaking contain and the message that needs to be conveyed to our team moving forward in the future, we need faster linebackers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need fast definitely... outside linebackers, fast inside linebackers. If, so sometimes you gotta, you know, find a problem, attack it, in in a multitude of ways. And you know, guys like us who are talking about the things that we see, you know, it's because we sit back from afar watching it, and we want to see it corrected. And you know, you got to take these opportunities to look at what we're doing, the platform we've created, in order to go out and chase perfection in your team. So, so D, I say all that to say. You know, indirectly, I hope our school is watching and listening to what we, you know, the information we got to offer because, you know, we're doing it for all the right reasons, man. And it's it's, it's been an honor to do this all year, Danny. You know, we, we appreciate have you, you coming on, man. And we're and, and going to extend this to all things tech, man, more things tech to come. And uh, we're going to need we're going to need your insight you know, <laughs> every other week, maybe now. No doubt. Yeah. Man. Yeah, Danny, I want to I want to second that, man. You know, we appreciate you, man. This has been great adding you to the team and your insights been great. Your breakdown as well as, um, you know, just your energy you bring. You know, um, I'll say this, man, about the matchup real quick. And we got to let you go, Danny. But um, I I look at it and, I, and I'm going to talk to our next guest, Ahmad Hawkins, about this because he's a Wahoo and he's also somebody yeah. that's known Mike me a long time. I mm-hmm. actually look at when you said the programs being evenly matched, I think. With all due respect to uh, Bronco Mendenhall and his program at UVA and Virginia Tech, prior to JC taking over because he gets it. You look at both guys have outsiders, so to speak, from from you know BYU and Memphis that came in, and the UVA Virginia Tech rivalry that I was a part of that I knew growing up, similar to what we saw with Miami and Virginia Tech last night, last weekend, excuse me, is 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 sad. Like the status, like uh, one team is six and five, one team is five and six. Tech being five and six, where when I play UVA, you're talking about both teams being ranked uh, 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 a plethora of Virginia guys sprinkled in some Washington, D.C., Florida, Maryland guys, and it being sold out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the crowd Saturday in Charlottesville 50-50 with Tech fans 
because UVA fans, you know, you can say what you want, but they show up for basketball because Bennett's going to give them a product. They, they win championships. But football, I know UVA is taking a shot at us right now, but they're they're not in a much better situation. And that's that's bad yeah. for the that's bad for the Commonwealth. You know, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's very true. Do you make a, I, make I, a very I, valid point? I do. I hate to say this. This is all things tech show, but I do like that quarterback only because he's a lefty. That's yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's, he is. <laughs> no, he's, he's, all the lefties out there. They yeah, yeah. Much left. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, man, you have a great Thanksgiving. You tell your family I said, what's up, man? We appreciate you jumping on, man. Have Thanks, a great man. Hey, I, Happy holidays. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. Opportunity of a lifetime to be here with you. So I really appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And hey, we got Virginia Tech hoops tonight. Big game. Number nine, Memphis. Number yes, nine, sir. Memphis up in New I'm York watching. City. So keep, keep an eye on that one as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate the reminder, man. Take care. All right, guys. See you later. So that was our guy, Danny Noakes, joining us, giving us Noakes Noakes. Also covers Washington football team, the Terps, the Hokies does some segments on 106.7 The Fan with Grant and Danny weekdays throughout the week. Great insider, great Virginia Tech sports analyst. Now we're being joined. So last week we had Ray Lewis on. You know, Mike and Ray Lewis are close, but this guy is very close with both Mike and I. This is my teammate in Hampton High. We got joining us right now one of the hardest working men in the media business, especially for his Wahoos. It's tough to bring him on this week because – my senior year, he had what is known by many UVA faithful as the catch on my senior day. I should knock him in his face. <laughs> I got <laughs> we got joining us a mod hawkins, aka ball hawk in the building. What's going on? What's up, man? What's going on? Ooh, what up hey. with you, babe? What up, D? <laughs> What's up, bro? Hey, Hawk. Uh huh? Hey, man. The Dwight, that was my teammate, too. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, he was yeah. my teammate too. Yeah. He was teammates in Atlanta. Short yeah. stint, but yeah, man, me and Ball Hawk go way back to. Hey, look, guy. Hawk, Hawk, this is how you know me and you close. This is what I brought out. Mike, Mike and it was tripping. I got it. I got it. I got it here. Yo. It was robbery week. I got it. Come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> I broke it out. I ain't look. Hey, you know what's special? You know what's special? I said, oh, Hawk coming on. Let me grab the gear. You know, he might, he might, he might stick somebody, he might get. You know what's my guy? A uh, Dingle and Patrick Kearney at battle. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I get that's a, helmet. that's a helmet for a real man right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing outlaw right <laughs> now. Real yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> Amar, you cover UVA sports, man. You know, I tell you all the time, man. I jump on some of your other podcasts. You have several podcasts. You have uh, Shut the Hell Up, Juice Apparel. Um, you have The Walk you do uh, featuring everybody from Bronco Mendenhall to the players. You've been doing that. You do stuff with the ACC network. You have been really working hard. You just want a great player, but you also have been a great father and a great leader and a great media person. Great ambassador. Yes. A great ambassador. Great. Yeah. With that being said, man, I just had Danny Nose coming on. I was telling him and Mike, man, you know, we were fortunate, us three, to play when the UVA Virginia Tech rivalry was was really, really good. You're talking about yeah. we win one, y'all win one. Y'all win two, yeah. we win two. And then there will be a little streak. But overall, the household names, you know, Cornell Brown, Anthony Poindexter, I mean, you know, Wiley Rayner, you know, uh, we had Thomas Ike Charlton, Jones. Thomas Jones. A.B. Yeah, listen, Antonio Banks, when you think about this week, just talk about what it, you know, because we're from that PD area, Ward yeah. versus Ferguson, yeah. Hampton versus Bethel. Um, does it take you, give you that kind of nostalgia? Or what's it get? What kind of feelings do you get when this game pops up? You know, it's a little different now just because um, – I think it was so special for us because we come from the crib. So we come yeah. from, you know, 75 Hampton, 757 Hampton, Newper News. Um, and then you had guys across the world, Virginia Beach and Norfolk. So you play against each other. You can be against each other in high school or in the playoffs. And then you get a chance to play with each other in the All-Star game, you know, the Daily, the daily Press All-Star game. So um, then you branch off and you go to Tech or you go to Virginia. Back then – only a couple guys went out of state and you know, my cousin Sean Hanley went to Florida state. But other than that, it was those two schools. Cause you know, you went to tech, Myron went to tech, Walter Ford went to tech and you know, Aaron Mundy before that went to tech. So when I was getting recruited, you know, it was between tech, Virginia and uh, Florida. And I actually like stood tech up to go to a track meet. So it was like <laughs> bad wow. blood there. 
Yeah. Wow. Hold on, hold on, Mike. Cuz, hold on, cuz. Don't worry about it. Let me check it out on y'all a couple hold years Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get, so this was crazy. Uh, for our listeners and viewers, I'm giving y'all some scoop if you don't know the story. Ahmad was my teammate, my senior year. I'm his leader. I gave him confidence, and I love him like a little brother to this day. Lined up beside I, him in the huddle every play. Every huddle in my entire senior yeah. year. Cuz, check this out, Mike, because you were already at Tech. Uh, no, you were you weren't at Tech yet. Ahmad, yeah. I get the, I get the call from Coach Kavanaugh. You know Coach Cav. Yeah, Coach Cav. Coach Cav said, "Hey, Myron White, you guys are hosting Ahmad Hawkins. I had Ahmad, and the, uh, Myron was going to host uh, not Muffin, uh, Juice. Was it Juice? Yeah, Juice. Juice yep. running back from Hampton, baller, beast. And I was like, bet me and Myron ride up to the airport. We waiting, we waiting. Myron, said, you know, I can't say Myron. Said, you know, man, after I'm I'm out, man." <laughs> I said, nah, man, mod and they gonna come. You know, I'm hyped. It's a mod. Yeah. Kavanaugh, we leave. We come back. Kavanaugh was like, they didn't get on the plane. <laughs> wow. Get on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Give us the story behind that, Mod. <laughs> I want to know. Hey, talk so, about it years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, no, no. So I had an indoor track meet, right? And so I had committed to, to take the trip to Virginia Tech. And then Coach Ham was like, yo, we got a track meet this week. And I was like, oh, oh I want to start my track season. And so I talked to Tech, and I was like, can I reschedule? I was like, nah, like, this should be the weekend. We got your boys waiting on you. And I mean, I'm, you know, 17 years old. I'm just like, all right. And yeah. I, I was like a Hoffa house, and Kyle was like, so you gonna, you ain't going to run track? I was like, what? No, we hitting it. We're going to Richmond. It was an indoor track. Yeah. He's like, what about yeah. Tech? And I was like, well, I guess I ain't going to Tech because uh. I'm not getting on this plane. I want to run with y'all. And dog, Coach Smith, when I got Monday – Woo! I caught it from everybody, dog. He, he laid it on you, huh? Everybody, big mama got on me. My pops got on me. Like everybody, everybody got on me for staying the tech up. So they was like, "Yo, you might as well don't even talk to him no more." Because if I was them, I wouldn't keep recruiting you. And they, you know, it's ever tired. So right. yeah, I, I always wanted to ask you this real quick. Like, who was some of the teams that recruited you? Because you know, we was we was somewhat yeah. rivals. You know, yeah. Hampton, Warwick, Hampton, Ferguson, and I try to mm -hmm. keep up with y'all, but. You know, I don't even think I asked you this when we was in Atlanta. Nah, Who were some yeah. of the teams that was hot on your trail? So it was Tech, UVA, Florida. They were heavy. Florida was really heavy. Florida was probably the one that recruited me the most out of everybody. Uh, really? Virginia came on. Um, Ohio State was recruiting me as a running back because the games I played running back, I went over 200 like every time. But I only played sparingly. And then my senior year, I was doing a little bit of half. Um, and those were mainly – the schools that I really paid attention. You had like the Georgias and stuff, but I was focused on going to Florida because my cousin went to Florida State. I always wanted to go to Florida State, but he was yeah. like, don't go to Florida State. So right. I was like, I'm going to go to Florida. And he was like, food, that's our rival. And I was like, well, yeah. I ain't going to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't want to play the running back because I didn't think I could take the pounding. So right. um, I... I went to Virginia because I've ruined it with Virginia Tech. But then once I met Coach Wells, bro, when it's, once he came to Big Mama House and he, and he sat on the leather leather furniture, oh, I, I mean uh, the plastic furniture, not the leather, the plastic yeah. furniture. Yeah, yeah, I knew. I knew. Once she said he could sit in there, I said, yeah, she got yeah. it. I'm going to VBA. It's comfortable. So, it's comfortable. Level. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know how that is, man. When that head yeah. coach come in and I let my grandmother, once she was comfortable with him sitting in that room, you don't touch that room unless it's Christmas. Yeah. So. And he forgot his keys, so he had to make another visit. So, right. <laughs> ooh, man, then, uh, then when I went to when I went to UVA and visit, when I went to UVA and visited, bro, I forgot Brooks was even there. Really? Yeah, I was just so not though, I, bro. When I tell you, I was focused on Florida. Yeah, heavy, bro. Everybody back home told me he was going to Florida. I was focused on Florida. Everybody. That's what I, that's what, I think that's what we was hearing too. I think that's yeah. what we was hearing. I was focused on going to Florida, man. You know, I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked you went to UVA. I remember that. Yeah, I, I, you exactly. know, I just, I was when I seen that, I was like, Ronald gonna gonna follow suit. He was. I, he was. I knew he was gonna follow suit. So fast forward a couple years down the road, now you mm -hmm. got you at UVA, you got the tech rival. What you remember yeah. about that and some of your greatest moments in, in some of those days? Oh like, what do you no! Remember? I want to know. <laughs> So it was bittersweet. So my first year, I tore my ankle up a couple of games before we played y'all my first year. Um, I scored my first touchdown versus Florida State, which was ironic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus Tate Cody on the slant route. And yeah. then the next game versus Maryland, I was blocking. And Anthony, uh, 
Anthony Sutherland ran up on me because the safety kind of just jammed me right into the fullback. I yeah. tore two ligaments in my ankle. So I was out the rest of the season. So the game in which we won at Scott Stadium, I didn't play that first year. But the second year, I was excited to finally play in the rivalry. And I, you know, it was just like he was on the field. I knew you was on the sideline. But yeah. just like I knew about Anthony Midget. I knew about everybody on that. Like I knew about everybody, bro. So right. it was one of the things where I was looking forward to that game because, yo, that's that's tech. It's tech, you know yeah. And I know what I did to tech. So I'm like, yo, I can't, I can't not show out versus them. Right. I, I had no touches that game into that play. No targets, wow. no touches, no nothing. Like I was just All like, right, what play? What play you talking? The one. See. Mm. <laughs> All right, do you want to tell the story? That's it. The catch. Yeah, so, the catch. Yeah, if you remember, man, the catch to win the game, you probably put it out your mind, Mike, because you – Yeah, he did. Know, we, so, basically, Ahmad didn't have any catches the whole game. We were up that game. It was your red shirt year, my senior. I remember that. It was yeah, very no, – that it game. Was, it was very similar to – that game, Mike. Yeah. My, my, the, the, the 95 game, UVA uh, had, was co-champs of the ACC. They were up yeah, on us yeah. 20, 29 uh, to 14 or something like that. And 29 uh -huh. 14, we came back. Antonio Banks interception of the yep. sideline. That's what Geek fast, got the triple. Fast forward three years later, we up 29 to 7. And I am running my mouth. I am yeah, running yeah, my because I, 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 I remember was, 29 I, I, 7. I, I was talking to their sideline. I was talking to Donnie Green. I was talking to we were about to fight y'all punter. Donnie was yeah. about to fight the punter. Donnie was gonna fight Kibble because Kibble kept yeah. pulling him out of bounds and slamming with him and Donnie. Yeah. Yeah. So long story short, man, Amar won't even catch a nut. And then no. all of a sudden, man, Aaron Brooks got hot in the second half. He just no. took fire. Yo, know, he took hot. He got hot. He just throwing darts. And that secondary that year, ninety eight, we led the nation in interceptions all the that way into legit. the yep. into the end of the season. USC got us about by one interception. But mm -hmm. Amar caught it on midget, man. It was a simple out route. Midget speed went out. Speed out. Midget went to bat it down. Amar caught it. Ran the sideline. Pointed. And then he now mod again. Uh, just let everybody know, man. I never found this song to jump on my other podcast, the Victory Life Legacy Spotlight. Mm. That catch picture on your your view right here, with your hands out to the sky, was not about taunting tech fans. You did taunt them after you got up, but oh, yeah, yeah. when I got but, to the sideline, uh, yeah, I slipped. Yeah, my I saw you. Oh yeah, you were doing a lot of yeah, stuff that yeah, probably would get you yeah. get canceled now. Shut the hell but, up, juice was created that day, by the way. <laughs> But, but the, hand, the hands to the sky is to who? Because just a little bit about uh, that. To, uh, well, you can't see it, but Saron and Shanelo Gibson, my two cousins, got murdered February of 98. Um, and what is it? Isla Wright, which is close. Isla White. Isla White County. Isla White. White County. Yeah. Um, one got shot 14 times in the back. The other one 15. Um, like almost execution style. And they were planning to come to that game. Mm -hmm. um, so that pose was for them. That pose has nothing to do with football. And every time, only reason why I enjoy this week, because I get to remind everybody that that pose had nothing to do with football. Yeah. It was for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shanelo was like a dude I looked up to. He played at Aberdeen. When I moved from Doris Miller and came to Hampton, and I found out he was my cousin, my dad's side, like, he took me under his wing like Sean did. So, yeah. um, you know, Shanelo was, was, you know, my big cousin, a couple years older than Saran was the same age. And um, they meant a lot to me, man. So that's what that pose is for. So for it to be to become what it was and be iconic is bitter. It's like that's how you know God work in mysterious ways, man. Because they they celebrate it every time, every year they celebrate. It. So so you played that game with a heavy heart, bro. Yeah, in a sense, bro. But when I when I made that play, I was just protecting myself because AB threw it and hit me in the damn face. <laughs> <laughs> it's a picture in the Richmond Time Dispatch. They got he literally dog. What I tell you, I ran a trash out. Anthony sat on it, drove downhill before I came out. He was already because I peeked at him when I hit my step, and he was already coming downhill. Yeah, I'm like, damn, it's gonna get picked <laughs> off because AB told me we we're breaking the huddle. He was like, yo, oh, I'm coming to you. I was like, why? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. He, he said, like, why? You. you said, said why? why? <laughs> Hell yeah, I said why? He's like, he's just out. The one eating. You know what I'm saying? So he threw it to me. All I heard was a whistle. I couldn't see. I didn't see the ball. I just heard pink. And I just, you know, reacted. So I just trapped it on my face and brung it down with the same hand I trapped it. with. Well, my left hand never touched it. 
Aaron hit me in the face with it. In the corner of my uh, face, man, right there, bro. Like a hundred miles. I'm talking about anticipation. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you throw whistle balls. <laughs> can mm. and he didn't see it either because he got knocked down. Yeah, shout out to Aaron Brooks too, man. Shout out to uh, AB. Great. Shout out to Cuz, man. Yeah, wow. man. Dope, Dope, man. One of the goats. Yeah, man. I don't think, and I'm not just saying. I, I, you know, I speak the truth, or at least what I feel is the truth when it comes to sports opinion and insight. I've always felt. And I may be a little biased because I've known Aaron since we were kids. And I know what he did on a, in high school and college and pro. But yeah. I feel like Aaron Brooks will forever be one of those quarterbacks that's, that's forgotten about or doesn't get his just due. And I feel right. the same way about Terry Kirby. Terry Kirby was on my other podcast. And mm -hmm. he's not, before Ronald Curry and all these goats we talk about now, this insane kind of guy, you know, basketball and football, man. Speaking of those household names, you know, Mike, you know, myself, you, Ahmad, Aaron Brooks, Terry Kirby, Robert Hunt, all those Virginia guys, man. Point Dexter, you know, I played against mm -hmm. them in the VHS All-Star mm -hmm. game. You had Antonio Banks, William Yarborough, a.k.a. Keller. When yeah. you look at, and again, when you look, yeah, it's a rivalry. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna strap them up, Saturday. It's going to get personal. It's going to get some ugly things going to be said. But from a grand scheme of things, you look at the UVA and the Virginia Tech football program. Yeah. And you look at those names. I know it's a different time. People come in and pluck players away, and Virginia is no longer the best kept secret. But UVA is still not where you think they should be. And we already know we how we feel about our Hokies, me and Mike. What do you think both programs need to do? You know, you guys are already in the bowl. Bronco is building something there. He's doing a great job. But at the same time, you are part of greatness, right? Yeah. So are we. What do you think they need to do, both programs, when it comes to just building their programs? You need to recruit the state better. You know, really get out there and and pitch how important it is for those young men to stay in state and, and what it does for their legacy. You know, it's like, why leave the state and help out an uh, out-of-state brand when you can help your in-state brand mm -hmm. and become immortalized in a way that you can never imagine? I'm I'm a, like, I didn't make all ACC. I wasn't an All-American. I had one play. If this happens at an out-of-state school, it's not going to be like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. It, it 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 got immortalized like this because I'm from Virginia, I'm from one of the pipelines. You feel mm -hmm. me? And I'm and I'm connected with Aaron Brooks, so it's one of the things where it's like that's why I meant so much. Like Big Bro played with my dad uh, at the Pony League for baseball. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then he went to Ferguson, and then he went to Virginia, and he hosts me. I go to Virginia, and this last throw in the regular season for UVA last touchdown passes to somebody who looked up to him growing up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, but if I'm from out of state, they don't look at that. So you become mm -hmm. immortalized without even like you could change the narrative. Like Quinn Blender took, you know, Quinn, Quinn Blender stepped out there and tried to do it for us. That dude yeah. was an all American every year at UVA, no matter how good or bad UVA was, he was an all American every single year. He was at UVA at Satan. Think about that, bro. Every single yeah. year he was on an All-American team. And we was trash. He's immortalized because he's from here. No Small doubt. Mazel, he from here. Andrew Brown, he from here. It's no different than you, Vic. Both of y'all, then your brother Marcus, and you got uh you did it at home, man. You did you know it at home. It's it, it just it just hit different. So that's I never, I never thought of it that way, too. Both schools gotta just Keep these kids in the state. There's no way that these kids from Hollis Springs should be leaving. Oh, the kid yeah. from the kid that played for Ohio State, the running back. Oh yeah, back and in from Hopewell. He would have left the state. The kid from Hopewell. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. Thomas Jones when oh, he was in high man, school, I, bro. I, yeah, that, that, that was Antoine Womack when he was in high school. You feel me? Mm -hmm. you know? Every time I see him break a run, I'm like, damn, he right there from Hopewell. He right down, you know, he right up the street. So that's what they got to really. Really go back to the drawing boards, rebuild those relationships with those coaches in that hotbed and, and get them to their universities, whether it's UVA or Virginia Tech. But you got to keep them here because there's too much talent. The kid from Bethel uh, won the Defensive Player of the Year award. Like, he's from Bethel. He would know the team. Yeah. Come on, tech, bro. Tech, tech, won, tech won't even talking to him. Todd's so, boy went to Clemson. Come on, yeah. man. See, <laughs> Florida State. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so many guys man. hey so so hulk man look just just one more last question man i know you got you got you are the hardest working man i know right there with mike 
Uh, when it comes to this weekend, you know, Armstrong, yeah. we were just talking about him with Danny Noakes on here, our VT insider and sports analyst. He was just yeah. talking about how Armstrong, prior to the injury against BYU, and even when since he's come back, is playing just as good as any quarterback in the nation. Yeah. And it's very reminiscent of Perkins. One thing about Broncos and a great job of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. um, but your defense on the other side, you've given up 59 points to UNC, 60-something, yep. 66 points to BYU. Pitt, yep. your offense kept mm -hmm. battling, but, you know, Pitt's offense kept making plays. The yep. defense has kind of held back UVA from a chance to win the Coastal. Mm -hmm. uh, Virginia Tech has been up and down all season, but just like UVA, they take pride in that Commonwealth Cup that was that was started back in the 90s. Yep. Um, what do you expect this weekend? You know, because you and I, we, so me and, me and, me and Ballhawk talk all the time. Yeah. And same thing with Marcus Higgins. We talk all the time. So this week we talk before and after the game, win or lose. Mm -hmm. And we have different perspectives. But at the same time, we know the game played at a high level. What do you expect this week in between both UVA and Tech? Um, so I expect a lot of emotion because you got an alum leading the way for Tech. To me, that's more dangerous. Like if Fuente was still there, I'd be a lot more confident because I just yeah. felt like if it started going wrong, the fight might not. Be there. And that's not. I'm not. That's not a me dissing the players. You just know, like, if a coach is kind of checked out, his his enthusiasm and his way to motivate his players kind of taper off. But now you got a head coach, an interim head coach that that lived it, that was in it, that got that sweat equity. This is dangerous. And like I, that Miami game was Miami. This is Virginia, and he knows yeah. what it's about. Yeah. So I expect the team to come in. Be very physical, be locked in. It's going to be emotional. So both teams got to do their part to play in between the whistles. No stupid penalties. Um, with us, we know our offense can get hot. But what can our defense get stops when our offense has that low? We usually have a part of the game where our offense, you know, we go may go six oh, out and start punting. You know what I'm saying? So I always say with our defense, I played arena football for 10 years. Our goal was to get three stops because we figured we'll score 90% of the time. So if mm -hmm. you get three stops, you'll win. With our defense, I got the arena pros. Give me one stop a quarter. And if you give me an additional turnover offense, you got to score seven with one of those stops and one of those turnovers. That way you always stay ahead. You get Virginia Tech out of that comfort zone being very physical and balanced. Anytime we played Tech, even when Mike was there, if we couldn't get up on Tech, and they got to remain balanced. That's when they're the most dangerous because play action come into play. That's what made yeah. him so dangerous as a quarterback. Yeah. When, when Davis was here, when they came to Charlottesville in that 99, and he hit him with that deep pass, everybody thought they was going to start out running the ball. And he yeah. let that thing fly for 70. And any time, and then we went back there the next year. We were up early. Womack was running. But they remained in striking to where they can run and pass. And he had the ankle injury, but he still might. And it's still mm -hmm. that... They're in striking distance where they can do both. So my yeah. thing is get up on tech early, make their quarterback be a quarterback now versus being able to have a luxury of handing it off. Yeah, right. that's, that's what we run into the uh, situation yeah. with Pitt and BYU. They were still allowed to be balanced. We beat Georgia Tech. We beat Illinois. We beat those teams because we made them have to throw. And it's easy to defend the pass because you could throw in so many combo zones and games on the defensive front versus a team that – it's balanced. Now you guessing. And you know how it is, bro. It's easy to just hand it to somebody because that running back can take care of that extra defendants. Correct. A lot. You know what I'm saying? Like a pump return. Yep. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? So we got to, you know, in order for UVA to win, you got you have to score a third. Anytime I've seen us beat Tech, the two times I was a part of teams that beat Tech, you had to score over 30 points. But mm -hmm. you got to throw. You got to be able to throw, back them up, get them out of attacking. If Tech can attack you and then they can be bounced on offense, it's going to be a long damn day for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah it won't no be easy. No, it won't be yeah. easy this week, bro. I'm going to tell you that now. Yeah, it, it might be a Josh straight spot, but it won't be easy, baby. Hey, man, I'm just trying to keep you from bowling. Last time I'm to trying to do track. my part. Let's go. Yeah, I'm hey. trying to do my part. I love you like a brother, but we about to get in that. Yeah, I know. I, hey, look, I just want to send y'all home for the holidays. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to be home. Well, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> hey, it's interesting, man. It's crazy, man. No matter what, except for a handful of years when they were both playing for the Coastal, which I love when they both playing for something big. But for the most part, it usually comes down to one team needing something. 
Yeah, one yeah. team needing a bowl win or needing that win to get bowl eligible or whatever. So yeah. um, it's going to be interesting, man. But, you know, this is the, the time of the year, you know, I joke and bring out my helmet. When I look, I always look at that UVA Tech game because I have so many memories. I'm telling you, man, it's nostalgia because it's nothing like going against Robert Hunt, even though we both are offensive linemen. Ooh. I played against him for four years at Hampton, right. and he was at Michigan. Then played against him another four years. <laughs> That's what it should be about. And it's oh yeah. And it get it, it look, it get crazy. It, it get funny too, man, because me and Donnie Green were going at it. Ooh, really? <laughs> Donnie was letting that mouth fly. That I was out boy. The ref told me one time, he said, Why do you hate him so much? I said, No, that's my guy. <laughs> he was hey, like, you don't realize, bro. That's when you compete your hardest. When you compete against somebody you got a lot of admiration for, a lot of love and history. I tell people all the time when we play against Vic, I was like, yo, I'm trying to pick, hey, y'all. <laughs> Boy, let me get one off him. I'm trying to get one off him. But then at the game, like my brother, like, hey, I talk to you all let, the time. Let me tell you who feel my fire real quick, Hawk, before I like before we let you go. <laughs> who right. feel my fire for the tech UVA battle? Who? Byron three. <laughs> mm. Bro, I seen him down in the strip. I was a red shirt freshman and I just got the job. And he was like, Oh yeah, we know you coming this year. And <laughs> Again, we seen each other and chatted for a few minutes, and he was like, "Yeah, I know you coming this year." I'm like, "Yeah, I know," but I'm looking at him. I'm looking at his back and his neck, and I'm like, "Bro, bro, yeah, I gotta, I gotta train a little harder this yeah. summer." You know what I mean? And you know, he, he he just, you know, right then, just that little interaction. You know, it was fun. It was cool. But he he told me right then and there on the strip in the summer in July that we needed to get ready for UVA and. I knew it was going to be a tough task. Yo, man. it's One of so the crazy. In sports, yeah. I will say. Yo, you're so right, cuz we always ran to each other on the strip. That's why we it's always important. we, we would always see each other on the strip. Everybody that summer. We clashed on the strip, bro. Virginia That's Beach. Why it's everybody talking yeah. we talking about we talking about the summer times of Virginia Beach in the late 90s and 2000s. Everybody yep. back then the who's who, not just of the tie water, but of, of the East Coast would be on that beat and every time we run into some UVA guys. Y'all yeah. have on, you know, the football players always got that uh, uniform. We gear. always got some issue gear on. Yeah. And we dap each other up, and all of a sudden it started yeah. coming out. Yo, you ain't ready, man. We coming yeah. at you. <laughs> now, but you know what's funny about, it's funny about the rivalry, bro? Like, no, so everybody knew I played, Ron was my quarterback, but nobody knew me and Mike was close until after we played the second time when he decided to come out, and we chopped it up, and all these cameras around, and he, we exchanged numbers. It was like, Yo, you know Mike? I was like, bro, I grew up with him. I just mm -hmm. played yeah. alongside Ron. Like, he's my bro. They was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, this whole right. time. I was trying to tell you. We played Max, for the man. Yankees together, man. The yeah, Yankees so that's together. why people are always amazed. Because I'd be like, yo, I actually grew up with Mike. You know what I'm saying? So I know Mike. Yeah. So that's why that, that cast, was always man, funny. Yo, Cash don't realize I was, I, was like a, I was like a double agent. I was like a dude and you know, B, <laughs> BMF. I was recruiting Mike to Tech. With all my energy, and I was recruiting Ron to UVA because I wanted to see that happen. That would have been yo, the best rivalry in college football. And Ron, Ron, Ron backed out, man. But you know what? Shout out to Ron Curry. Shout out to Mike Vick. The gold Shout out to Ron, Ron, Ron C. Ron C. That's the That's the homie. That's Glad the homie. That's the Yes, he was, special, bro. he was special. Hey, listen, people don't hey, realize. Hey, Mike, I tell, I, tell, I told Vic the other day. It's funny how we always joke about ball hawk, and he always say, "Man, Mike always say ball hawk." I'd be like, "Dog, Mike, I don't know if Mike remember when I was in Atlanta, they had a write up about me, and they called me that because I was getting my hand on the ball. Yeah, they called yeah, so I got it from the Falcons, yeah. even though I got cut, it st it stuck with me. Yep. So that's why it's funny when he said, because I was like, he was around Man, we, when they gave it to me. When, 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 hey, when we let Hawk go, that hurt that's me. My bro, yo. Me and Hawk, yeah. we was tight. We was trooping it out in training yep. camp together. We got close, and we was like, "Man." We gonna play here yes. for a while together. It was looking good, dog. And, uh, it was looking, it was looking great. Nature that, yeah, business. I, I was making business, that, bro. It's yeah. a business, man. Yeah. But speaking of out. business, man, keep doing great things with your businesses. All, you know, I'm gonna talk appreciate to you soon, you, man. man. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we appreciate you jumping on, man. You know, for us, it's bigger than a rivalry, but at the same time, we're looking forward to a great game this Saturday afternoon, yeah. 3:45 kickoff. Mm -hmm. uh, and Ahmad. How can people follow you? Even if they we're talking all things tech, but you do a lot. People don't realize your podcast cover a lot. Real quick before we let you go, how can people keep up with you? Your Twitter handle, all different yeah. things. 
the website? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at I am Ball Hawk. And then if they want to see any and everything I do, just go to AmonHawkins.com. So every oh, everything yeah. that I do, I upload it to my web page. And if you want to contact me, use the contact box to direct directly emails me and I interact and I shoot you a message back. So, and anybody that listens to my podcast know when I break down the opponent, it's respectful. Yes. I give them their flowers. I yep. love mm-hmm. what makes them dangerous. Because at the end of the day, man, I had my time of, of playing and going back and forth and petty, but you, you want to make sure people are really getting informed and, and really understanding the game better. So when they do hit tweet, it's not just yep. disrespectful that somebody sucked. They can actually understand For the sure. game. You feel yeah. me? So he does a great breakdown, ladies and gentlemen. Teaching. Please. Yeah. Shout out to my guy, Ma. Thank you for joining us, man. This won't not be the last hey, time. Hey, you, Ma. Hey, also, Mike, if you want, I know Uncle Shay Shay got the, you know, the hen dog, and you know, I, I'll give you a case of shut the hell up juice to take him. They could bet on that. Let me get a case of <laughs> shut the hell up juice, man. For real, so I can, hey, so I can pass it out. You know what I'm saying? betting on that mountain. Don't tell them the best of shut the hell up juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, appreciate it. I like it. Appreciate like you, man. Yeah, love Have what y'all day. doing, Thank man. You. Respect. Thank you. Have a blessed Indeed, Thanksgiving man. too, man. Yes, sir, man. And before right, I get out of here, wahoo, wahoo, we got to get this, keep this stuff on the side. <laughs> yeah. All right, get out of here now. Get out right, of here. All right, baby. Love <laughs> y'all boys, man. Love you too, right, dog. Man, you too. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. That was my guy, Ma Hawkins, man. Uh, UVA ambassador, man. Covers all things wahoos. Also, make sure that you check him out. Look, I know we're talking all things tech, but outside of UVA sports, he, he covers all sports, but especially – pro football, basketball, and even the hot topics that's, that accompany us in, in life and just stuff that's going on in sports. But anyway, we are going to now finish our show off, as we always do, with two phenomenal Hokies joining us in the building with Mike and I, Vic 757 Show, talking all things tech. We are now being joined by uh, Hall of Fame, Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame, defensive back Tyrone Drakeford, and also my teammate, and one of the best backs to ever do it. Ken Oxidon from the 804, man. What's going on, gentlemen? How you guys doing? Man, just loving life, man. Glad to be on the show. Man, you looking good, Drake, man. <laughs> Drake, Drake man. looking good. Yo, you still look like you did when I came to Tech, man. <laughs> man, I only wish. <laughs> yeah, man. Ox, what's up, man? Ox, how you oh, doing, man? Bro? Man, just trying to get it right, man. Getting it right and doing things and trying to be, be like you guys, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Um, what's up, Ox? What's up, there, there, there it is. There it is. There it is all day long. <laughs> yeah. This is so, the family. True yeah. family. This is real family right here. So all down all day so, long. The brotherhood is real. I tweet that. I post it on Facebook. The brotherhood is so real, man. We talk to guys that's playing now, that played during your era, Drake. We've had some of the guys come on, man. Your name has come up in Hokie Trivia, which we'll get to our Alexandria Restaurant Partners and Trivia sponsored Hokie Trivia in a second. But we're going to talk a little bit about this week. This is an important week. And also, Virginia Tech is going through a, a transition, a transition that, you know, I know for me, I can't really relate to now as an alumni from a player, but it's something that really happens all across college football. But before we talk about that, man, Drake, I'll start with you. Man, you just recently this week went into the Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame. You and Macho Harris. And the DBU legacy of Virginia Tech is absolutely crazy. It's legendary. You and my guy, Russell, you know, back when Virginia Tech was going from an independent to the Big East, you guys didn't have, y'all weren't sponsored by Nike. It wasn't like every weekend primetime games. You guys, as Antonio Banks said, quote, y'all built it from the mud, unquote. At the end of the day, man, when you think about being in the Sports Hall of Fame and just your legacy of Virginia Tech, that DB legacy, what does that mean to you that whole weekend, the whole your whole career? You know, you played NFL, Hall, uh, with Hall of Fame player Deion Sanders won Super Bowl. So just when you look back at that. Well, it's really surreal, man, because when you come from a little small area where I came from, you know, Camden, South Carolina, you know, and then to get the opportunity, you know, to go to Virginia Tech to play some big time ball. Even back then, we weren't as good as you guys were. Um, but but just to get the opportunity to compete, you know, at a high level, at the Division One level was something that a lot of my friends, you know, um, didn't get an opportunity to be a part of. You know, and just to to get that chance to do it, you know, and then to find yourself finally going into your um to your school hall of fame, you know, it's just something that's unbelievable. You know, I take pride in it, you know, and I hope that everybody else that's in that hall of fame uh, I feel the same way. Um it's truly a um special fraternity to be a part of. And uh 
And I'm just glad my name finally got called. Yeah, well, I am too. Long <laughs> overdue. I don't know. I don't know how what took so long. I mean, I know Virginia Tech is a Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame, so you can't sit there and say, okay, it's got to be all football players and basketball players, and other other athletes are great too. Um, but at the same time, man, it's about time. And I, I say it on behalf of a lot of your teammates, opponents, and even guys that played during my era, man. Hey, Ox. Um, yeah. You you were my teammate. Me and you came in together. And um, you came in as one of the biggest recruits in Virginia Tech football history. And you came in and you played as a true freshman. I redshirted. Thank God. I wanted to redshirt. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you hit the ground running, um, pun intended, you hit the ground running. You know, you play yeah. legendary Dwayne Thomas, you know, Florida standout, you know, Brian Edmonds, and also um, some great running backs, Renal White. Um, just talk about your time at Tech, man, and building off with Drake and those guys left off. Man, you know, it's so crazy to watching them coming off of the uh, Independence Bowl game and um, really um, – and, and, and really – understanding especially going into this weekend and you know i i grew up you know a uva fan uh but i knew of that rivalry and I, I knew of the you know the 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 tech history and everything that went behind it um and and, and to a fault to, you know because more or less it was like because tech for those times it was hidden away you know realistically you know we you, you knew it was someone but you didn't really uh understand it um and really what really got me enamored and just is just just because I, I my my visit wasn't the greatest. You know, my, my host left me. Uh, Who Hank was your Coleman. host? Hank Who Coleman left host? you? Yeah, Hank Hanky left me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got some school. Yeah, yeah, because um uh he we ended up we went to went to a bar and one thing it was it, but this is what's so crazy, no one knows. We're supposed to my, my senior year, and I don't know if I've told this story before, you know, you get you got five visits. Um, and I was only able to take four because we ended up going to the playoffs. Uh, we're when we would have ended up playing Indian River in the state championship. Uh, we end up playing um the school that Ivana went to. Uh Annadale, 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 Annadale. And and this, it goes into overtime. I have like, you know, a hundred some yards, two touchdowns, whatever the case, uh, 15 tackles. Light work, and, light uh, work, light work. Light work, light work. <laughs> and he said that with ease. Like that was easy. <laughs> but it comes down to the the last play of the game. Um, they have, I think one of the linebackers, Maurice Daniels, was one of the kids that played linebacker that went to Penn State. And they had another kid too. And our uh, quarterback had the option to give it to. I was I was getting faked off the end. It was going to our, t- our fullback for inside trap, uh, but our quarterback had a read to quarterback sneak against two All Americans. <laughs> and so, <laughs> nonetheless, me and the fullback fall into um, the end. We said, "Oh man, we we score, we score." I knew he scored. Well, that happens. Well, I have an opportunity to have a uh, open date. That weekend, if I would have, if we would have won that game, I would never, never have visited Virginia Tech. Mm. Really, wow. really, and it's crazy how God works, man. And but then also for whatever reason, because El, Ma- they came in on me late. Elmation was also the reason why I came. He was was key to me coming there. Just his, you know, his char- charisma, that that talk, how he talked. He almost he got a sort of like that beamer beamerish voice, but it's sort of like that that New York. Like yeah, he's intense. He's boy. intense. And yeah, so, he's intense. yeah, man. So I, I ended up, you know, um, you know, that weekend been able to visit, and you know, and the good thing is, I said, and you know me, Dwight, I'm a different dude as far as this, you know, music that I used to that I listened to, and just what really got me with tech, and that's one of the things as we continue the conversation, you know, tonight is that it has to be the right person that gets that head job. Because tech, it's you don't you go there and you fall in love with, it. you know. And me and uh, Kevin Johnson, he played wide receiver at uh, at uh, Syracuse. Syracuse, uh, yeah. yeah. Me and him, for Cleveland Browns. Yep, yep. And it was so crazy. He was going there to be quarterback. <laughs> Coming to tech, yeah. He wanted to. He was a quarterback in high school. 
Yeah, and that so, would have lasted long. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, well, shoot, look what happened when he went up to Syracuse. You know, it was like, all right, wide receiver. Yeah, <laughs> McNabb was so, there, bro. Yeah. But, but yeah, and I just fell in love with it, you know, and 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 what I didn't know, what everyone knows now, is I was the number ninth best recruit in the country when I came out. That's what's so crazy. I knew that. Yeah, I did. I, I knew that. Like after, you know, after you know, when I got to the Falcons, and you know, I saw some of my. You're right. My, I forget. I forget you played for the Falcons. What about? Hold on. Let me, Drake. Hey, What's hey, up? hey Drake. You, you played for my 49ers, man. That's right. Can I shift gears for a second? Because I'm sure a Brooklyn can. Niners fan. You touched the field a couple of times on a lot of different occasions with Dion. I think right. winning that Super Bowl, being in the locker room with Jerry Rice and Steve Young. Oh, my goodness. My childhood legend. What was it like, man? What was it like? I need, I need you know, inside scoop on what it was like playing a candlestick. You know what was so crazy about, about my about my rookie year was that I missed like eight games my senior year at college because I broke my leg. And I mm. we played Miami. I never had the opportunity to go down to Miami to play them down there. And the Super Bowl was in Miami. Oh, so wow. uh, just having that experience to be back or, you know, to be down there for the first time and to win it and then to play with those guys was like unbelievable because – a lot of folks see Dion, you know, as a flashy guy, but when you play with him, he just one of the guys. He want to hang out with you, go to the clubs, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? He's just one of the guys like everybody else. But the, but the good thing about it, when you play against guys or play with guys like that, the Steve Youngs, they make you compete because you know they're good, so you want to be good. So it right. that whole year was just so unbelievable that everybody wanted to be the best. So when uh, when that came all together, it was like, man, we knew we couldn't be beat. So – um. It, it was unbelievable to play with those guys, you know, and then at Candlestick, you know, um, I loved it, but I hated playing there when it, when it was the so-called winner because it's cold in San Francisco. Yes. Um, oh, really? Yeah, man. A lot of folks don't realize, but it's cold in San Francisco, man. It, mm. It's probably just as cold in San Francisco as it is in New York. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, that's right. Really, yeah, them jackets and coats and stuff. I'm like, man, it's California, but <laughs> right, hey, man, you think San Francisco, you think sun, sunshine all day. Exactly. And, 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 and Ox. Ox yeah. played for Atlanta. Ox, we would have we almost played together. I know, man. <laughs> oh, don't. I was looking so forward to that. Uh, because I, I, I talked to Bob Christian and he just said, Man, you made it so easy for for them just to be at a the block people because people had to respect you. You know, they right. was like they, they they had they couldn't cheat their lanes, they had to, you know, take the outside shoulder, all that stuff, and just just keep it keep it on the on the real. Now it's like well, come on now, Falcons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, you all you gotta give the white a lot of credit. He put you in the pros. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> there it is. Hey, hey. Hey, you was at the forefront of what you at the oh, forefront no. of kids? Yeah, look, yo, look, me and Ox, man, uh well, me, hey, good, uh, T.J. Washington, Bill Connolly, Chris Malone, uh, you know, Ty Washington, Derek Smith, um, Janelle DiNapoli. You're talking about my five years in tech, man. To, to me, those arguably are the best old lines in Virginia Tech history. And I want to add even players I didn't play with uh, before me, Jim Pine, uh, Chris Berry, um, all those guys. I think, you know, the 90s and late 80s, there was an emphasis on – establishing a line of scrimmage because Nebraska yeah. was winning national championships, running the triple option. And people understood Mike Gentry, the one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in college football history, understood like a lot of street coaches back then that you can have guys like Mike and Oxendon and Marcus Park and Dwayne Thomas, but you're not going to win without O-line and D-line. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look at tech now and I look at college football, especially at our school and even – you talk about guys like Ox. You combine great versatile backs with great offensive linemen, and you're going to win 80% of your games because we were really physical. Um, you know, it's funny, man. You know, we had uh, William Boatwright on, another great offensive line. He was on a few weeks ago. And this man squatted 800 pounds, 755 wow. pounds, and would have got 830. Gentry wouldn't let him. But I think <laughs> – there was a sense of pride. I mean, I know the game has changed with physicality, but Drakeford, I'll start with you, man. You know, you know, I talked about those names. Um, we got UVA this week, but not just our rivalry game, but just talk about 
you know, the game, how physical, you know, it was and, you know, the mindset y'all had. Because when I look at your time, Drake, you know, Beamer got there in 87 and you were there starting kind of the, the run, the Independence Bowl. I believe you got a pick in that game, right? Yeah, yeah. You got a pick in the end zone. Yep. Yeah. And um, you and Yarborough and Tori and Gray and all those guys, y'all started to run the bowl streak. But at the same time, y'all took some lumps. Y'all were physical. Y'all kept losing games at the end early on. Right. You know, just talk about that transition and what you saw happening. And did you think Tech would be in the position that it was when me, Mike, and Ox got there? Well, the crazy part about that Independence Bowl, I'm going to start with that first, is that back then, if you got a pick or, or something in a, in a bowl game, it didn't count towards your record. So if I had got there, I'd probably been tied for first. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah, man, back then when I came in back in the 90s, um, we played against the Oklahomas, man, the Florida States every year. You know, and I know you guys play when you got in the ACC, you know, the Miamis. We played against those guys. It was ranked in the top five every year. And we would lose to them close. And people always say that we was the best six and five team, which sucked, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> people thought that was good. You know, they thought that was good for us, you know, at Virginia Tech back then. And we was able to compete with those guys, but we just never could – find um, a complete way to win the game. You know, uh, we could be right there. So eventually, uh, when it got to my senior year, that's when we we had Phil Amazing come in. Um, just like Ken said, those guys kind of changed our whole dynamics of, of what we should be doing. You know, and then we just went on a run, and then you guys just carried on there for the next 25, 27 years. We was going to bowl game after bowl game and winning. And then in, 90, in 98, I think 99, you guys played against – um, Florida State in the Sugar Bowl down in in New El in New Orleans, Mike. Where I saw you for the first time down yeah, there, man. Yeah, so, um, show me some love too. Yeah, man. Just to be able to do that and see the transformation, man, of the, of where the school has has really gone is unbelievable. But now, you know, uh, we're now back in the era right now where they're kind of struggling a little bit, and um, and we hope that the change will be for the better. I hope JC get the opportunity because I played with JC. Um, so um, you know, um. Uh, the physicality, uh, just go back to what you were saying earlier about the physicality of, of the way we play and the way the game is played now, obviously, it's totally different. People always ask me, do you think you could play in the secondary now uh, on the way these guys are playing? And I always say no, but, you know, if I was playing now, I'm sure I could adapt my game to it. Uh, but it's totally different from when I was playing. Uh, there was a lot of headhunters out there back then. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah, you know, I'm – if you're playing, you'll find a way to adjust to it, man. But for the guys today, you know, in, in the university, they just got to find a way to keep the streak going against um, against UV. I know we lost last year, but to get back going, man, I think we owe these guys. Um, and they'll come – they'll find a way to win the game. Yeah. Yo, know, Ox, you know, uh, I want to ask you a different question on, on behalf of Mike, my co-host, man. Um, you know, you and I saw you on Drake Kim Talk. You talked about being a stallion, playing for Coach High. All you guys was like eight of y'all talking about mm -hmm. the running back legacy and everything like that. But at the same time, man, um, <clears throat> you look at you look at you know the the offense that Tech runs, man. You know Drake would talk about he would adapt it to the game. Um, do you look at the offense? You know one of the things where Babcock said in his press when he decided to uh, remove Justin Fuente as a head coach, he talked about identity, which has been a complaint by many former players. Like we don't know what Tech's identity. If you 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 coach some and you've been around sports, you were also with the Atlanta Falcons. The year y'all ran the ball, the Dirty Bird, and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you really push, man? Like, I'm not saying if you were coaching tech, but what do you think when it comes to offense when you watch us play? The issue, like, what do you? I mean, is it consistency? Is it? What do you think, man? It's it's no one. It's like 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 we've been saying for a while the identity, but when you look at what wins championship football on all levels. It's you, you, you run the ball to set up the pass, you know, because the thing is, and, and then you play with all the other stuff you got, four wise and three wise and all the other stuff. Because, you know, the thing is that what we haven't gotten, gotten right is understanding that the quarterback doesn't need to run the ball every single play, mm. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and just, and you look at, you look at Alabama, you look at what, uh, what Belichick has done, you know, Get into your, your playmakers. Get it into their hands quick because that's going to set up everything that's deep. Because then if you hit everything short, 
it's going to come off long. And the thing is, but we haven't been doing any of that. You know, you, you, yeah. it's been more of a of a systematic mess than it has been. Yeah. Anything. And so <laughs> it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So realistically, get back to what you know. I, you know, could you know, shoot, I, you know, me, I, I love to see our formation downhill. You know, two back set. You know, pro because you can, you can, you can do so many things oh. off of that. Hey, hey, Kent, hold up. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, Dwight. Yeah, we did. What happened did. to lining up in <clears throat> I, strong, yeah. weak, near? Like, I, I, I even go back to the near. Remember the near formation? <laughs> we had yeah. a fullback yeah. there. It's just like run like sweeps and, you know, little powers and traps. Yeah. I mean, look, I man. It, I mean, just I, 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 you, I mean, you was one of the greatest backs to ever play at Tech, and there's been a lot of backs that been, came after you, and I'm pretty sure you keep track of all the guys who came and went. Mm -hmm. But when you when you look at the Virginia Tech offenses now, you just said it. You you want to see more of, of the the normal looking sets, like yeah. pro sets and and mm -hmm. two two backs, a tight end, two receivers. Like, is that something you want to see more of moving forward? Yeah, definitely. You know, because the thing is, you. Play great defense, what Tech has always been known for, and then you just got to manage the game with the offense. And the right. thing is, if, you, if you're doing those things, you're going to attract. Because it, it makes no sense for us to have two guys that is less than 15 minutes from me that is playing at different colleges. Hmm. One went to my high school, the number one back in the country. And I was like, how is it that I – and I was here for both of them. And no one said, "Hey, look, hey, go and go and holler those two guys for me." And so those, and that's what's so crazy with where we're at now, is understanding the offensive side. You know, is that, and that's the one thing that drove me crazy with Fuentes. You're offensive guru. You're supposed to be an offensive guru. And the thing is, is that taking that ownership of of, and that's what sort of drove me crazy with him is he didn't take ownership when they were getting on his offensive coordinator. He didn't say, "Well, that's my fault." You know, most right. time when you see head coaches, head coaches, they go take the blunt and take that heat away from their coaches. He didn't do that. Didn't Basically, do yeah. but he <laughs> said, "No, that's he's the offensive coordinator." Basically, he was saying, "Hey, he sucks, and I can't do nothing about it." <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so you know what? Yeah. But you know, man, can't oh, right. hit it on the head, um, guys. Is that we all know that most of the talent on um, the Kane of a Jane Tech was was coming out of seven five seven, okay? I'm from South Carolina, and that's all I heard. And I think when these guys came in, man, they lost the recruiting battle. Yeah. There was too many yeah. good kids there that we just wasn't getting. They was going everywhere else but Virginia Tech, and yeah. it started yeah. to take effect. Well, yeah. you know what, Drake, but you're 100% right. And I'll say this, Ox. I said this on our um, show, the Big 757 seven show, talking all things tech. Mike touched on it about, like, you know, the mentality on the field and not being afraid to commit to the run. I think it's also they didn't know. I don't think Bo Davidson, who's no longer at Virginia Tech, and Fuente. I, I feel like if I if I move to Florida, so Mike lives in Florida. If I move to Florida in his neighborhood, the first thing I'm gonna do is ask Mike to put me on, like where you get your haircuts, where's some good high school uh, games to go watch, right? What's some, right. some good restaurants? Who should I stay away from? Is this guy right. cool? You do business with him? I don't think. No, I don't think I know. They, they 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 were so focused on committing to you know getting their scheme and coaching and I get that you know I, that is a tough job I respect Fuente and all those guys for what they give up because we all know as players and some of us who coach we understand what you give up so at the end of the day I also think though they did not have an idea of what it really meant to be a Hokie and what the connections are like with them around the state around South Carolina D.C. Maryland and Virginia. You have yeah. Lauren Johnson. There was a picture that was sent to me after Lauren. I had seen it before, but after Lauren Johnson was on our show where Fuente was at the state semis or regional. Yeah, it was the state semis when Highland Springs beat Indian River. And Greg Deutsch, who went to Wake Forest and went to the New York Jackson and draft, uh, or he was a free agent. But there was a picture of Greg Deutsch where he was killing it. And um, there was also another guy there for Indian River who went to Virginia Tech on a scholarship as a linebacker. I believe it was Tavante Beckett who ended up playing at Marshall for J.C. Price. Yes, 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 Beckett. Beckett. Yep. So, and then you had another linebacker for Indy River going to Alabama. But for the most part, look at the talent I just mentioned. That was just a few years ago. Yeah. But Doris did not leave with an offer. 
In that same year, Daz mm-hmm. Newsom was at Hampton High. He had nine touchdowns one game. That is Deion Newsom's younger brother who played at Tech, also both sons of Myron Newsom. Also related to Tyrell Wilson, who played defensive end at Virginia Tech. I think when you get to a program, you call in a Jim Drunk Miller, you call in a Ken Oxendine, you call in a Mike Vick, a D'Angelo Hall, myself, JC, guys even from the Tyrod Taylor, Kevin Jones era say, hey, here's my card. Let's go play some golf. Make sure you send kids my way. Right. The guys that got there were Justin Hamilton and them. When they got there, Justin Hamilton and them knew, but already the damage had been done. It was a lot. It was very. It was. It was. It was almost too late. So, yeah. yeah. Drake it's called was, assistance. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's called, Drake, it's, it's called assistance. It's called as assets. Yes. Yes. Like, like yes. we are all that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think other players should be that for their alma maters too. You yeah. know, I know a lot of guys who play like Charles Woodson, good friend of mine, great friend of mine. I love him like a brother. He's headed headed up to Michigan this week. You know, some sort of enshrinement, big game, Ohio State, Michigan, but his presence alone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what we bring, man. We uh, we got to understand and they got to understand our prowess. And I think guys like John Boleyn and people in the program do. And, and it's about bringing that back. Even with Babcock, he understand, like, the value that we bring. And, you know, he said that, you know, that's one of the things also that that what the administration has to do is they need because Belen has been there forever. So the thing is, when he has, when there's new people that come in, you know, especially on the coaching staff, especially in football, he know he's been around football forever. He right. needs to be in their ear because it's not like our coaches that left went to, uh, you know, the like the 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 the, the coordinators, the um, recruiting coordinators, like a uh, Kavanaugh. You let those coaches that come in, hey, look, talk to Kavanaugh, plug him in to, you know, to those places that's in the state that he's recruited. And so he can create those relationships with those coaches, because that's the biggest thing. When you get new regimes that come in, you know, if they come from, like he came from Texas, you know, he don't know, you know, Virginia. He don't know those. Yeah, these but, but, but hold on, hold on. But you, find, but you find out though. Okay. Again, I look at Lauren Johnson. Lauren yep. Johnson told me he's from Day. I, we all know he's from Day County, Miami. He was an outsider when he took over for Highland Springs. He told me he spent the entire summer reading the book on their alumni and their high school history. He went into barbershops. He talked to Macho Harris, Chris Hill, the Hopkins brothers, Jim Davis. All those guys I mentioned were Highland Springs, and I forgot yep. some. So you got to you got to do your homework and get acclimated. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And yep. And, it, and it's not just on Fuente because he had ball games to win. It starts with the athletic yeah. directors, yeah. the administration. Yeah. You got to yep. make sure, you know, even I'm going to put it out there. I don't care. This is nothing new because I stay on Twitter. When Tyrone Drake for the Montreal Harris were being inducted into the Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame, you got more coverage from me on Twitter and Facebook than you did the school. Yes. That's unacceptable. Antonio yep. Banks as well. He also chimed in and promoted and reminded people. Brendan Hill was posting pictures and videos of Macho Harris. So legacy – and expectations and foundation are all correlated. They have to go when you got to be aware and also keep evolving as a program. Drake yep. and Ox, I'll ask you two questions and we're going to jump, jump into Hokie trivia. We play UVA this week. They're six and five. They're already bowl eligible. They've been eliminated from winning the Coastal. Virginia Tech is five and six and needing a bowl game win. You were part of a historic win at UVA. Um, on the road in 1993. If I remember correctly, I didn't do my homework on this, but I remember because I was being recruited by both schools. There was a goal line stand by you guys, right? Right. And you guys won 17 to 10 on the road. Yep. Maurice DeShazo, you guys jumped on it, you know, in Sky Stadium, jumped on them 17 to nothing or 17 to three, I believe. And you guys were just clicking and you guys, your defense were playing. When you look at the Virginia Tech UVA rivalry during your time, and in, in, in your your moments, man, what comes to mind when you look at this week and what it means to be a Hokie and taking on the Wahoos? Well, you know, the crazy part is that um, I've always thought every game was a big game, you know. But when I got to Virginia, because I'm from South Carolina, when I got to Virginia, it was all about Tech and UVA. So um, I, I can clearly remember, man, my, my freshman year, we played UVA. They was ranked like number 12. They had Sean Moore and um, – and Herman Moore playing. Herman Moore. Yeah. yeah. 
And we played them on ESPN. Um, it was a game of the week, whatever. Um, I think we were five and five going into that game somewhere up in there. And we beat them that night in Blacksburg. Uh, we went and again, we didn't have a Nike deal. So, so we went in <laughs> and painted our shoes black, man, to kind of really show off the of TV. But just to, um, just to bring those things back when you're playing against those guys, you want to beat them and you want to beat them good. Um, and Drake, so, and Drake, um, and Drake, Drake, that yeah, was. That was in 1990, correct? Yes, yes. And it was also, y'all beat them 38 to 13 that year. UVA right. brags about it, but they were ranked number one in the nation early in that year. Early they in were year, ranked, right they, were, they were ranked number one exactly. for a handful of weeks in the yeah. nation. And they That's lost right. three out of five or something like that. You guys smacked them to end the season yeah. 38 to 13. <laughs> yeah, but just, just, hey, you know, I can tell you right now, I know these guys should be pumped out of their minds going into this game because because this is one they need to get so they can be bowl eligible. But but more importantly is that, you know, if, if you're a recruit in the state of Virginia, this game would kind of sway whether you go to Tech or UVA, you know, um, and, and Tech need to win this game because right now, like I said earlier, we're losing so many recruits um, in this state that we normally would get. Um, so this is a big, big game for them um, from Saturday. Yeah. Ox, your thoughts on the rivalry when you talk about it, man. You know, me and you were there. You you know, you didn't register, so my junior year was your senior year. But when you look at those memories, albeit some disappointments as well as success, what comes to mind when you think about the – because you grew up a UVA fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that, that the year you're talking about, Drake, uh, when y'all beat them at the end, they lost. They they I, I was there when they lost to Georgia Tech, um, that, that first win. And Georgia, that year, Georgia Tech ended up winning the national championship. Right. Um, yeah. So it, it, it was it was crazy seeing it from a you know fan standpoint, and then being on the other side of, it. and um, it's crazy because you know you gotta think the 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 people that we played against, Dwight, that played in the league from that team. Yes. And, you know, and, and just like you, Drake, you played against you know some phenomenal people. You know, Point Dexter, you know, Chopper, you know, Dingo, Barbers, you know, Ferrier, Battle, pa you know, Patrick Kearney, Kearney. <laughs> you know, you know, and and um, and also on the defense side, on the offensive side, it's like man. So, you know, you you really, you know, when you but then you look at this this state prominence and all the guys who are from you know Virginia that are playing in the league or, or, or around in, in the NFL. You you know, you're just it just you you know, it's one of those things where you 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 just love to see you know how two teams that's you know, that has drawn so many great players to each of the programs has has really been able to showcase, you know, some kids, you know, from some small hey, from the small state of Virginia and really have been able to do their thing. So you know, you, you know, know but it's Ox, you know what's crazy? And the rest of Mike and Drake, this is hit me out on this theory. This kind of came to mind as Ox start, he took me back to some nostalgic moments. You know what's crazy in a lot of ways. It's like it's like Batman and the Joker when the Joker told him, "You need me." Yeah. UVA, UVA, UVA. In a lot of ways, they need each other both to be better to push each other to get back yeah. to those. And again, I ain't rooting for UVA to be great. That ain't happening. Well, but at the same hey, time, as long as we beat them, <laughs> as long as we, but but no, hear me out. I've, I've gone on record on many radio shows and some TV I've done. I am good. I'm like Welsh and Beamer. There's enough talent. On the East Coast and VA alone, in Maryland and DC and Florida and South Carolina, to make both programs great. And I feel like when I look back, I take pride in the fact: yeah, we lost my senior year on the comeback. We beat them in '95, arguably the best UVA team in history. We also lost to them in '97. We were ranked 22 your senior year, Ox. But Aaron Brooks was on fire. He threw for almost 400 yards. So you can't you can't feel bad when UVA got Thomas Jones and Aaron Brooks. And, and, and Shannon Taylor, because everybody, I can keep naming guys, they yeah. went on to be great, whether it was in the pros for a few years or Hall of Fame careers or even um, arena football or NFL Europe. Yeah. I don't like the fact that you sometimes now in recent years, you turn the TV on, you got two, five, and six teams playing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because people be like, yo, that's y'all squad? That's 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 that's, that's, that's yeah. good football? Yeah. People, they, you hear people yeah. laughing, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy, but, yeah. <laughs> You know what yeah. I'm saying? So in a lot of ways, yeah. Tech would benefit better if UVA pushed them. This is one thing people are not realizing. And I'm not taking shots at Bronco because I don't get nothing. I'm a grown man. I'm good. I have my time. But 
UVA, if they were smart, they'd be stepping on Tech's throat right now with recruits. Yeah. And and you know, but but they haven't taken advantage. I mean, I, I think I think they're going through the same thing we're going through. Exactly. New coaching changes and new yep. it's new people, it's, yep. it's a new staff and new administration, and they just ain't got no connections. No, yeah, you gotta create yeah. some connections. Right? Yep, no doubt, cuz you're right. No connections, you know? no, straight up. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. all day long. But that's what it is, man. Like I like I said, man, I remember. Because my two squads back then were Notre Dame and UVA. Because a lot of guys from Hampton High were going to Aaron Monday and all those guys. And you had Terry Kirby and Chris Slade. So I was glued to the screen. And I saw them lose to Georgia Tech. I saw them beat Clemson for the first time ever. I saw them play Tech. And I kind of looked at Tech. Okay, I'm going to keep my eye on them. All of a sudden, when Drake for them went down there, my dad, we were going to church Sunday morning. My dad said, yo, Tech won that game. I said, yeah, I watched it. We were talking about it. He said, I'm being recruited. I'm, I'm ranked fourth in the nation. And I remember seeing Drakeford with the towel hanging from his waist down to his socks. Drake Drakeford had the longest towel. And he was out there joining. Yeah, you're right. That was. That to- and then look, and my memory's crazy. Then my friend, my red shirt year on my wall was Drakeford, Freeman, and Ken Brown. Because they were the posters that the bookstore and everybody was selling on campus. That's what that program, both programs are missing. In a lot of ways, as much as we, you know, that's we that's our bitter rival. We want to beat them. I like the fact that when I beat somebody that's good, I, I walk with, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. I, you know, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> this this six and five, five and six stuff. Look, real talk, let's keep it a buck, man. This is this, this what we do on this show. Don't nobody outside of the Hokies and Wahoos care about this weekend. No. Nah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Yeah. And, 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 that, and, that, and that is, I don't want to be part of that like that. I want us yeah. to get back. And I, and I need yeah. both of them to push each other, but that's my two cents on it, man. Um, guys, we got something fun. We're gonna have, we know, Tech UVA. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got some trivia coming up. This is Alexandria Restaurant Partners. Follow them at alexandriarestaurantpartners.com for catering, events, and also career opportunities. Um, we have hokey trivia. So Ken Oxendine, one of the smartest guys I know, Drakeford is my guy. Drakeford actually coached me a few years when I was doing some semi pro ball. When he was in Northern Virginia, <laughs> yeah. he also created he also created a AAU program called the VA Hokies Premier that was very successful. Still doing it things with Kip Washington. I took over a team and brought him over there. And Drakeford, right after Drakeford left, saw Drakeford one time. He said, "Bro, what you doing, man?" I was my son was in Gainesville, so Drakeford is not just a former player like you know most guys just you know living on their past. He's actually doing great things like you, Ox. So. You guys are two very intelligent people. So we are going to do Hokie Trivia right now. We got four questions, right? Nobody has ever gotten more than three. Uh, The high score has been Chris Ellis, former Bethel High School defensive end standout Hokie as well. Nobody's ever gotten four out of four. So right now, let's see if y'all can get one. All right, here we go. (laughs) Ox, I'm (laughs) going to start with you. I'm going to start with you, Ox. Okay. In what year was the Commonwealth Cup established in the UVA versus Virginia Tech rivalry? The Commonwealth Cup, guys, is the cup that, you know, the winner gets. It's the big silver thing, whatever, on the stands. <clears throat> we should all know what the Commonwealth Cup was. Is, yeah. Me. In what year was it created? Was it A, 1995, B, 1999, C, 1998, or D, 1996? And what year was it officially established? Because the UVA Virginia Tech game is a trophy game. It was. You got, you're not on your phone, are you? Uh-uh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at notes. I'm, I'm yeah, come on. I'm, right. I'm, okay, okay. I'm thinking about the years. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking it's um because it wasn't none, it wasn't doing when I was there. I think it was y'all y'all senior years when it was when it first established. Are you telling so, me the answer or asking? The, so 98, <laughs> I'm thinking it was it was 98, and then it became official that following year in 99. Okay, so which one is it, Ox? You kind of giving me two answers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a two-part question. No, that, what oh, year was really? the Commonwealth Cup? What? What year was the Commonwealth Cup created? <laughs> Multiple choice, Ox. <laughs> <laughs> 98. I, I didn't ask you up as this intelligent brother. That's the first. Yeah, 98, 98, right? 
All right. Yep. All you saying 98. Drayford, what is your answer? Well, it, oh, it's 1995, 1999, 1998, 1996. I'm going to say 99. Okay. Drake is saying 99. All right, cuz, what you got? I'm going to say 98. For some reason, I feel like it was 98. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, gentlemen, you are all wrong. It was <laughs> created. <laughs> yeah. The lunch pail was created in 1995 by Bob Foss when he became the co-defensive coordinator the following year in 1996. Yeah, the um, Commonwealth Cup was created that year. Virginia Tech won it. They won the game 26-9, on to a 10-1 season. They went on to play in the Orange Bowl that year against Nebraska when they were the two-time defending national champions. Uh, Ken Oxendine was the MVP of that game and told me, <laughs> he told me in the locker room he was going to declare early. So it didn't happen. We were down, I said that was at South Beach. That's Antarctica. real talk. Yeah, that was at <laughs> South, South Beach and women and bowl games. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was created in 1996, man. And then um, Virginia Tech won in 96. And, you know, they went back and forth. And Virginia Tech had the streak of 15 years in a row that was broke in 2019. Um, here we go. Um, all right, let's try again. Number two, which BT player? is number one all time in total offensive yards with 10,362 yards. This player ranks number one. Is it A, Don Strzok? Is it B, Logan Thomas? Is it C, Tyrod Taylor or D, Sidney Shell? Um, Drakeford, I'll start with you. I'm gonna, I'll read the question again while you process. Yeah, I know. My trivia, I told you, man, I'm getting y'all with it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Which VT player is number one all time in total offense, offensive yards, um, with 10,362 yards? Is it A, Don Strzok, B, Logan Thomas, C, Tyrod Taylor, or D, Sidney Shell? Who you got, Drake? Str a, Strzok. Don Strzok. All right, Drake's going with John Strzok. Mr. Oxendine, 804 Spiners. It's Logan Thomas. Are you over there cheating? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's the right answer. What are you doing? He's like, no, you're like, like, over there looking I'm, something up. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm, right I'm going to go with uh Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not I'm saying that's the right see answer. Tyrod. Tyrod, Tyrod okay. racked up a lot of yards in his day. He sure did, but unfortunately, he still didn't take on Logan Thomas. Logan right. Thomas. Logan Real Thomas. Fox over there. Lo yeah. Logan Thomas. <laughs> <over there. laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know how you knew that because when I did the research, I was like, yo, Logan Thomas is, you know, because he was there, but this was during Scott Leffler and, you know, the offense. I don't know, but he had 10,000 10, uh, 10, yards. But what's so crazy, though, is he, he you got to think, he never, he all, he never gave the ball. <laughs> he oh, he's on his own reads and stuff? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, man, this dude running the ball like 30 times. Well, to his credit, man. No, he won't. Because he was a passer. <laughs> he had, he had cheat, he, man. He, he, he did both. He had Jerry Boykin, Danny Cole, and uh Darrell Roberts and all those guys, but nice, I don't know. Nice. Ox, yeah, you know, that was uh that was good. Okay, Ox has got one. All right, here we go. Just a few more, and we're done. Which BT running back had four touchdowns and a win over UVA? Was it Ryan Williams, John Martin, Trey Edmonds? Or Vaughn Hebron. Once again, Mike, I'll start with you. As far as I read the question over once again, which BT running back had four touchdowns and a win over UVA? Ryan Williams, John Martin, Trey Edmonds, or Vaughn Hebron? Mike, who you got? Trey Edmonds played on defense, I think. Uh, I'm going to say Vaughn Hebron. I like Vine. Went to the Eagles. Shout out to Vine Hebron. That was my boy, Will 45. Mm -hmm. All right. Drake, who you got? I'm going to say Vaughn too, because I think he did it in 90. Okay. All right. I got um Ryan Williams because he that dude was doing a whole lot of everything. He was, he was good. Yeah. Okay. So, Ox, I don't know what you're doing up there, but you got that right again. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> right. 
Ryan Williams gets the Come black on, man. Hey, hey, you see you got that team in his hand, right? I mean, <laughs> what are you, you know, doing? I'm, I'm not even saying. You see he got that pen in his hand. <laughs> You doing something, man. Yo, I think you hacked my account, man. I can't believe it. But anyway, yeah, you yeah. got it right. All right, let's go. Yeah. Keep it All going. Right. Let's go. Last one. Last one. All right, we'll see. Um, true or false? I've been adding true or false lately, man, just to kind of get some guys on the board. After a 42-23 to 23 loss to UVA in Lane Stadium, Coach Beamer, Frank Beamer, the head coach, vowed the Hokies would never wear all orange uniforms again. Um. Drakeford, I'll start with you. Again, I'll read it very, try to slow it down. After a 42, true or false, after a 42-23 loss to UVA, we had seven turnovers that day. Maurice had, sorry, to paint the picture. He had five picks. Oh, I know. Um, um, in Ugh. Lane Stadium. Beamer vowed the Hokies would never wear all orange uniforms again. True or false, Drakeford? Uh, he might have said that, but they wore all orange again. You trying to trick me? I'm not going. Yeah. To, you're not. You got to sell me true or false. Is it? I, you got to listen. It, Coach Beaver vowed the Hokies would never. It's true. He said it. It's true. He said it. But you're saying true. Are you okay? You're saying yeah. true. All right, Mike. What are you saying? I'm gonna say false because he ain't let me wear the sherbet. <laughs> you saying false? I wanted never, to wear the sherbet on. So he said you saying false. He never. He never. He never vowed. False, yeah, false. He never. Uh, yeah. All right, and no, hold on, hold on. I'm saying true. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm about to say true. Yeah, you saying yeah, true? Yeah, okay. he ain't never let. He ain't never. He ain't never. That's rocket. Okay, and Ken. Oh, you know I know that's true. <laughs> we, I remember getting out here. Oh, out. <laughs> man, I was like, oh, come on, stop throwing dead gone picks. I was like, come on, uh, hey, hey. Sometimes <laughs> you got to tell your quarterback. <laughs> so. So the correct answer is true. Coach Beamer said uh, we would never wear orange uniforms again. But Drakeford is right. That's why I wasn't going to answer him because you have to listen to the question or the statement. He vowed. He said we. He won't. He let not let Berlin and uh, Lester and all them. <laughs> it won't happen because you know Coach Beamer, like a lot of coaches, Beamer was very big on uniforms and and patterns and and, and trends and things like that. I still got my orange jersey. It don't fit, but I still got it. I was I traveled, yeah. I traveled five games that year, and I um and I got my orange jersey. But he wouldn't let us. It took everything in his power. My senior year, to let us rock all maroon. Beamer was not big on all maroon, and then no. Nope. Years later, after Tyrod and them got there, this generation they got nineteen different uniforms. You're right. Hey. I'm like, man, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you got my man Drake, but man, Hall of Fame future player in NFL spray paint his cleats like that. You're right. Wow. Spray paint like you were wild. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that's crazy, man. So look, gentlemen. Speaking of reflecting, man, we this is at the end of our show, man. We're wrapping up, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna give. Uh, you know, Ox, I'll let you go first, but Drake, you and I go as well as Mike. Um, we had our Soul Hoodie, uh, one of our sponsors, Soul Hoodie Hokey shout outs. Um, check Soul Hoodie out, soulhoodie.com for apparel and also custom wear. You can shout out any Virginia Tech player, teammate, coach, a regular student, somebody that inspired you, a professor that crossed your mind. It is the holidays. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Ken, who do you want to do your Hokey shout out with? Um, to Troy Peace. Um, oh, oh, yeah, good one. Uh, and, and really, all Troy Peace, Dorita Radcliffe, and um, uh, DC, you know, all those individuals they were in the um, in the academic advising, they all in different type of administrative positions. They are, you know, people of color that I looked up to from a leadership standpoint. Um, as uh, DC and Dorita are associate ADs or ADs or senior, I think. Uh, and senior AD uh, and Troy's at Georgia Tech, you know, doing his thing. And, um, you know, it's it's phenomenal seeing. And that's one of the things that I want to see more of when you look at the administration of Virginia Tech is more people of color, you know, mm -hmm. in the administration, because there's not enough people that can have a voice for us as uh, black individuals. Yes. And, you know, and so when you look at it, in administration, you know, it really frustrates me to when they don't, when we're not being invited back, because why is that a reason or what is it? So I just, hey, I, I, I've death been on my heart for a minute and, 
you know, when you look at the administration and see where it is and who they have and who they don't have, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting. But nonetheless, those are some of my, my people that I love to death, you know, and uh, they, they meant a lot to me. No, that's a great, that's actually a great pokey shout out, man. Shout out to you for just mentioning that. Uh, Drake, what do you have? Who, who do you have? Well, um, I'm going to say two people, man. Um, John Berlin, which you guys mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, he, was, <clears throat> he was a grad assistant when I was there and, and still there. You know, <clears throat> so John is one of the guys you can call at any time, you know, anything you need, man. He's, he's willing to service you or your family. And, um, I probably say Bruce Garns as well. Bruce was uh, <laughs> Bruce was a year older than me, but Bruce, man, Bruce still there, man. You know, um, he's one of those guys that was up under John Belen, but he'll still do what you want him to do, man. Trying to take care of you, man. When you know guys trying to come back, um, you know, like Ken said, it just hasn't been as well as we would probably like it to be. But you know, no, those two guys, anytime I call them, you know, they was there to take care. of me. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's what's up, man. Bruce is yeah. Bruce is a bit on my podcast. And Bruce, if you have those, if you meet with Bruce Garns, you get perspective, tech history, and some funny stories. Right. I mean, that guy is amazing. His memory <clears throat> and just him and Belinda together is dangerous. Uh, but uh, I'm, I, I love them both, man. Mike, man, who do you got, cuz? I got two. Um, okay. People who uh, help shape and mold the Hokies program through and through. Uh, Jim Cavanaugh, who recruited me mm. uh, for two years. And then once I got to Tech, I didn't spend a lot of time with him, but he was very instrumental in me getting there. And then I kicked it. Shane Graham. Shane Graham, without Shane Graham, we don't go to the championship in 99. Um, he made that kick against West Virginia. And sometimes we, we hard on kickers because, you know, they miss a couple and you know, we like, all you do is kick. But it's one of the hardest jobs in football, and I don't think that 99 season is complete without Shane Graham making that kick against West Virginia that night. So shout out to Shane Graham and Jim Cavanaugh, uh, two of the guys that was a big part of our success at Virginia Tech, not just me. No, nah, that's actually great. And you, I was going to mention Shane Graham as well. I don't know why he was on my mind, but I'm, I'm going to just say this, guys. Number one, thank you guys both, Drake, for Oxford jumping on. Um, and I'm thankful for all of you guys. And this is Thanksgiving. We can talk about who's going to throw down. I know we all going to eat well and we're going to be blessed with great friends and family. But I'm going to just say this. I'm thankful for all you guys. And my hokey shout out, you know, when you guys start mentioning Berlin and those guys, I thought about J.B. Grimes. Coach J.B. Grimes was my offensive line coach. He left going into my senior year. But he went on to coach at, uh, in, the, in Arkansas. He coached in the SEC. He's still coaching now. I need to give him a call. But I just want to say, when I look back on my life, what you guys don't realize is on the way to my office here to record, I was in a car accident tonight. An hour. So, yes. I could mention it, Mike, early because we were yeah. setting up. Yeah. Like, a, a, a you know, pretty bad one. Seven o'clock. I was in it. So it gave me an hour. Police came. You know, me and the other lady were okay. But it's a reminder. You know, I was in a car accident. And we played for one of the best schools in the country. And when we have these guests on, everybody comes on and talks. We're all here in the physical. And we're here. And Coach J.B. Grimes taught me to appreciate life. He pushed me. He made me get up early. He made me take care of myself mentally and physically. He was one of the best coaches I know. And it coincides with what just happened tonight is that, you know, I was like, man, I don't want to cancel this show because people are looking forward to it. Our subscribers, our sponsors, everybody, the fans. So, you know, the lady came over. She was angry. This actually happened tonight. And, uh, you know, I said, she, I said, look, we're both OK. You know, let's just thank God we're OK. And I said, we're going to get through this. Everything out here can be repaired, but you and I are still walking. And she took a step back and she was like, thank you. And the guy came, and I thought about J.B. Grimes because J.B. Grimes, my last year at Tech, uh, we were in the game against Boston College, his last year at Tech, excuse me, in 97. And, we're, we're, you know, Chris Hovan and those guys were going back and forth. B.C. and Tech always had battles. And all of a sudden, the phone's being passed to me and Todd and Gennaro and Brad Baylor and Derek Smith. And I get my, my ear to the phone, and it's J.B. Grimes. True story for all our listeners and viewers. Oh, yeah. He leans in. Ox, you on the team. He says, yep. now listen here, big fella. I'm having a heart attack. I said, excuse me? 
He said, I'm having a heart attack. I'm getting ready to go over here to the hospital. Now make sure you stay back on your pad sets. Keep that head back. Make sure you look out for the mic and make sure you get to the second level. Keep your pad level down, okay? I'm a young kid. I'm like, what? That man was having a heart attack and went through the everybody on the starting line to make sure he knew he was going to be fine and to keep playing. So I can feel sorry for myself and my premiums going to go up and my deductible. But guess what? I'm here. You guys are here. We should all be thankful we're alive. I'm thankful for the Hokie Brotherhood. I'm thankful because those kind of things give me perspective. Because someone right now just got diagnosed with cancer. Somebody right now can't be home for Thanksgiving. So give it up for you guys, man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all, Hokie Nation. Thank Another you. great episode. Appreciate you, Ox, my brother for life. Drake for my big brother. Tech Hall of Famer. Make sure you guys support them and all they do. Mike, you know how we feel about each other. Tech goats, all love. man. All okay. y'all tech goats, man. I love y'all. Yes. Y'all be love y'all life. All right, man. Sure, hey, man. Virginia Tech UVA, man. Get the keep the cup. Keep the cup. Saturday, 345. Keep the Commonwealth Cup at all costs. Onside kick, trick plays. You got to fight with concession stands. Whatever it takes. Yes, sir, man. Go Hokies. Go Hokies. Right, yeah. Yeah.